In this video, I'm going to differentiate y equals sine x from first principles. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to need the first principles formula, which is given to us in the formula booklet. That is written up here, and this is how it appears in the AQA formula booklet, but you should see something similar in your uh, A-level formula booklet. I'm also going to utilise the small angle approximations. So if you haven't met the small angle approximations yet, that's what I'm going to be using here. And I'm also going to be utilising the compound angle formulae. So all of this is given in the formula booklet, ready to be used for this problem. So, first of all, I need to identify that I'm going to have f of x as sine x. And the formula requires me to have f of x plus h. So f of x plus h is equal to sine of x plus h. OK, so the formula f prime of x would be equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h. So sine of x plus h take away sine of x all over h. Now the sine of x plus h we can rewrite using the compound angle formula. So here the x is the a, the h is the b, and we've got a plus in between. So we're going to have sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h. So we have the limit as h tends to 0 of sine x cosine of h. Now, those of you further mathematicians who might have met hyperbolic functions at this point, this is not cosh, okay? Just to be clear, so this is cosine of h. Then we're going to have plus cosine of x sine of h. And we have the takeaway sine x on the end over h. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to factorise the sine x term. So I'm going to combine those two together. So I'm going to factor out the sine x from a bracket, and I'll have cosine of h take away 1 inside the bracket, plus cosine x sine of h, all divided by h. Now, h is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? In which case, as it is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and closer to zero, that means the small angle approximations are going to come into effect. So cosine of h will get closer and closer and closer to 1, take away h squared over 2, and sine of h will get closer and closer and closer to just h. So I'm going to get towards sine x times 1 take away h squared over 2 take away 1 plus cosine x times h over h. So we have the limit as h tends to 0 of sine x times by. Now, we've got 1 take away 1, so that's gone. So we've got minus h squared over 2. So I put that out the front. Minus a half h squared times sine x. And we've got plus h cosine x. And that's all over h. I can now divide through by the h. So the limit as h tends to 0 of will have minus 1 half h sine x, because we've divided through by an h, and we'll divide through an h there, plus cosine x. Now, as h is tending to 0, this multiplier will tend to 0, and so that term will tend to 0, and it'll get closer and closer and closer to being cosine of x. And so that is how I can show that sine x differentiates to cosine x from first principles.